you like seed? Oh, hey. So, um, in my recent trip to Gen Con, uh, I rediscovered uh, Star Trek customizable card game, which was big back in the 90s, uh, kind of feeding off of the uh, fad ish ifness, if you will, of Magic the Gathering and customizable card games in general. Uh, this was put out by a company called The Cypher. And it was, it was pretty strong um, from about 94 until I think 2001 or so. And then the rules got so convoluted and so forth that they came out with a second edition. And that, that went on for another few more years after that. And now they're stopped, they've stopped all production. But um, it's the first edition that uh, we, back in our high school days, played probably way too much of. Uh, and so when I was at Gen Con, I found that you could get a box of Voyager which we, we kind of skipped out before Voyager came out. This is an expansion pack. Um, that was eight bucks, I think. Six or eight bucks. So ridiculously low. These things would go for, geez, like 70 80 90 dollars for a box back in the day. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, I think, hey, for eight bucks, I, I'm good for a cheap thrill. And uh, let's, let's play this game that we haven't played for a decade. And uh, see if... Or attempt to play. Attempt to play and see if it, if it's still worth a damn. Uh, <laughs> um, no promises. All right, so uh, that was fun. I thought. Yeah, it was okay. Um, I think if we if we really like got into collecting. Yeah, and collecting, and knowing all the cards and everything, I think it would almost kind of take away from it a little bit because we we'd be so we'd know exactly what we were doing. Kind of the fact that we didn't really know and we could just go and make, run and have fun yeah. was almost, you know, better. And I think that was, I mean, that was, yeah, that was part of the fun to just pick up and play it. Um, but then again, when you get to know your cards, don't forget your mail love interest. Uh, um, when you it's pick, not my mail love interest. Isn't it? No. When, when you get to collect your own cards, though, uh, strategy really comes into play and that just it's really ugly. And that just brings on a whole other uh, aspect to the uh, game. So, you know. Um, so, something else that was in this game that's kind of missing from um, others, uh, or missing from uh, if you played the full game, is this is quite simple. Yeah. This is like basics of rules. Uh, you have one quadrant space. If you have multiple quadrants, you have different space lines you have to deal with. Uh, yeah. Deep Space Nine brought on the ideas of space stations, NORs, with different site locations, and then you have different draw decks, like tactics draw decks, or Hughes tents, and stuff like that. Oh. I, I mean, there was just a lot of bloat as the, as the uh, game went on, and Decipher figured, hey, you know, we just gotta add more and more stuff right. in order to make the game interesting. Uh, new concepts and so forth. And that's, that's alright, but uh, it, it definitely made it more confusing and I think the reason we eventually stopped playing was just because it was too much stuff to keep up with yeah, after a while. There was a lot going on. It was it was really really difficult to keep up with all those side decks and quadrants and even even the the very first expansion set I remember for for the next generation the original series was um, the uh, alternative universe or alternate universe. Yeah. And alternate universe had its own little kind of side decking right off the bat. Yeah. So there was a, a, but that was a little bit more simple, you know. Just had, but that was only one thing to track. So when you had basically cards that had all kinds of different little insignias on them, and based by what, based on what insignias were on those cards, uh, you had to kind of know, okay, this is alternate universe and delta quadrant mm -hmm. or whatever the heck else. Now another thing, um, not as bad. As, actually, I kind of like this, but it got a little annoying as well is that you had cards with their own little special rules on them in order so that you didn't have to read a whole errata set for every single expansion that yeah. came out. So it would be like, uh, oh, Voyager. Okay, you can download a bioneural gel, gel pack and a blue alert. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's fine. Uh, you have other things like the Caretaker's Array, which is just wall of text. Yeah. And and I I mean, I've been looking at this card for a few days now, and I still can't tell you everything it does. And yeah. Invariably, I'm going to forget part of what that does. Right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's just a lot to remember. Yeah, there's just a lot going on. And it's, it's again, it's not like Magic where... I mean, there are, there are definitely some cards like that in Magic where you have a lot of rules on one card, but 
Not nearly as much. The effects are really kind of there. There's yeah. not there's not a whole lot of okay, keep track of this and then keep track of that and then keep track of these things and once you start doing that, you kind of need pen and paper just to keep up with the rules of the game, and that, that kind of takes away from the fun of all of it. To right. anyone. However, not nearly as bad as Star Wars CCG, which maybe we'll get to another time, but uh, yeah. that thing was really full of, of rules bloat and errata. And know? every, yeah, because every single set would fundamentally change some of the rules. I know. Um, and part of it was because, you know, they come up with new ideas, and, and they want to mostly, as well, fix things that didn't work so well previously. And I can understand that, but it's mad. That, that's a testament to magic, is that it was such a great rule set that still basically right. goes on today, what, 20 years later-ish. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's a testament to how good of a game that was designed by Richard Garfield mm -hmm. uh, in mm -hmm. the first place. So, Yeah, it's, it's a great concept, and I, I think that Star Trek, this, this game... The first edition, because we haven't played second edition, but the first edition um, did a very good job. So, like you said, a much better job than Star Wars did, because the reason that we were able to just pick up these cards and play is not because we went back and read the rules, as you can tell from watching some of the stuff that we were doing, but because we remember that this the, the rules are fundamentally the same. They haven't changed fundamentally since we played it ten years ago. Right. So, And there were a lot of sets that came out far, far beyond what we were what we were doing. But the rules changed so little that we were able to pick these up basically and just go. Right. So I think it's, you know, when you have a set like Star Wars where every single, every time a, a set comes out and com completely fundamentally changes things, adds a new rule, changes um, the core rule set, it just, I don't know, it just, it really takes away from the game in some sense when you start, when you get five sets down the road and you realize you're playing a completely different game. Yeah, and yeah, you, you get... Totally different. Um, that, I think that's something that they tried to fix in Star Trek, but it was a little bit too late. It, but in the end, first edition, <clears throat> first edition Star Trek, I think is still fun. You keep things a little basic. Um, the fact that cars are ridiculously cheap now kind of helps to pick yeah. it back up. Yeah. Um, Eight bucks, fill up. You know, you can fill up an entire Saturday playing Star Trek Voyager, and and uh, and you know, it, it is fun. You know, maybe put on some episodes or something. It could it could be a, a pretty cool. And thing. if you're a fan of the franchise, you know, you get to go. Oh yeah, I remember this guy. And right. This, and it, it's it's definitely interesting. So uh, you know, it's still good after all these years. We'll probably pe play a few more games with this uh, later on. So hey, if you guys uh, remember playing it back in the day and. You know, you're like, oh man, I haven't played that in years, just like we have. Maybe you can uh, go online, uh, eBay, so things like that. You can find stuff for relatively cheap now. So, why not give it another whirl? I guess. Yeah, I, I think it, this is this has been fun. I could definitely see us playing um, some more games in the future. So yeah. it, it turned out pretty well. I, I didn't think it was going to be much fun, but it ended up being pretty cool. So. <laughs> All right, so I guess that's it for our uh, little mini review vlog of Star Trek CCG First Edition. See you guys later. There is no reset button. <laughs>